well my dear students we are now going to start a very interesting chapter a new chapter in the series of technology of metal forming and today we would discuss a recent topic uh, which has become very relevant today and important is a uh, high velocity forming or high energy rate forming process. Okay. So, we would discuss the different aspects of high energy rate forming, different types of high energy rate forming and the, the industrial scenario related to this topic. Before starting as you are aware the automobile industry and the parts that are going to be made or that are going to be formed if it is of bigger size if the size is very big like a bowl say bowl of uh, diameter 2 meter right or bigger size then how do you form because under those situations the the equipment type of equipment required it is not very common especially you have to make and the cost is very high so how to go for such situation economically and you know uh, the aluminum aluminum farming is very has been very popular because of uh, the its light weight and uh, that is how it is very popular for the automobile industries aluminum also because it has a very good high strength and uh, it can also be reinforced with polymers the aluminum fibers and all those things to have a composite materials which is very lighter so it has been found that aluminum has been found to be very suitable for uh, for such cases of high energy rate forming especially also because of uh, the properties of aluminum itself you know the the aluminum has uh, very high strength to weight ratio it has a good corrosion resistance like surface reacts with oxygen to form aluminum oxide and uh, it also protects against corrosion by oxygen water and chemicals the another thing which is important with aluminum it is the electrical conduction the heat conduction concerning the heats up quickly and evenly also cools quickly so this property and the property uh, another property which is light and heat reflection so because uh, uh, because uh, uh, you, uh, it uh, it reflects around 80% of the incoming uh, uh, light as well as heat and that's how it is very good for the light and heat re uh, reflection property and very good and the last property I would like to mention is the shaping properties. It can be shaped by most metal working process. Uh, it can also uh, be bolted, it can be glued, it can be riveted, it can be soldered and it can be welded very well. So, these properties makes aluminum to be very specific 
especially for forming and that is how I think aluminum is the, the very suitable material for making bigger uh, products like the example I gave and uh, the high energy rate forming is one of the emerging area uh, for these situations. So, also uh, one has let us see why high energy rate forming is required because the metals normally fail in quasi static that is under low velocity tension cases when a phenomenon called necking occurs you all are aware of this right. So, and secondly in necking the cross sectional area decreases and stress increases to the point of failure. Thirdly at high velocity therefore, the inertia plays a role in the deformation and can offset the loss of cross sectional area therefore, reducing stress and allowing greater strain before failure. So, that is how is the very important reason that high velocity forming may overcome the necking problems and the metals in tension may also form internal voids right which contribute to a loss in the area and failure. So, because of these reason uh, the high, uh, high velocity forming becomes very suitable for and you know the aluminum the several studies uh, shows that aluminum is the most uh, uh, effective for all this situation and uh, because of the weight itself. There are three classical problems if you remember the aluminum is uh, thought to cost too much the aluminum can be hard to join aluminum can be hard to form it is not like that. So, the only there is the classical problem now with these uh, cases like um, high energy rate forming you will come to know that how easy is with this. So, we will deal with uh, these issues and uh, uh, let us see how other people uh, use the aluminum because uh, the aluminum, in, aluminum intensive vehicles if you remember as far as the production and prototyping is concerned you, must, you can see these two vehicles uh, as a production vehicle as well as prototype vehicle. So, these are intensively all aluminum parts you see the body especially is aluminum parts. So, here you see uh, the Plymouth uh, Prowler uh, Audio 8, Acura NS, Lotus and uh, other roadsters uh, vehicle cars, prototype uh, neon light, uh, sable light, Audi AL2, Ford and uh, uh, these are all aluminum body and uh, usually it is made uh, hand by hand build. So, there are problems however, with aluminum because it is hard very hard to form because of the traditional approach if you follow. So, like here you see uh, if this is steel panel is to be made. So, and then the another aluminum body. So, it is very complex and it is very hard to form. So, but uh, there is a property we call as the super plasticity. So, the aluminum very much fit with the super plastic uh, materials. See, you know the, the super plasticity most of you. So, super plasticity in fact relies on high strain rate sensitivity like uh, silly putty or chewing gums like. Right? So, it has a very high strain rate sensitivity. So, this phenomenon that is the super plasticity is only seen with very fine uh, grained materials tested at elevated temperatures and uh, very low flow stresses are also associated with this deformation mechanism that is super plasticity. And aluminum has been found to be very suitable for this. That means, generally super plastic materials which is 
uh, high energy rate sensitive like aluminum, it will be best fitting. So, and another way uh, when you form uh, by use of gas for the super plastic forming. So, the gas pressure has been used for super plastic forming. You can see here there is almost no tooling, uh, the simple tooling is very simple and tooling cost is also very low for uh, gas pressure super plastic form. Like here you see, you have a closing uh, and pressure and then you provide a very high energy uh, gas and uh, it will take the shape of all those. So, so, so that is that is the male forming and then, then another is uh, and then there is a female forming cases, male forming case and then there is a uh, combined case and the third one is the, the female forming using gas pressure super plastic forming. So, above cases uh, these parts can be formed very easily using gas uh, uh, forming super plastic forming, because the tooling is easy, the cost is easy that is another requirement. If you know the, uh, if you recall the Panos uh, road star cars, so that uses super plastic aluminum um, for forming. Uh, in fact, in 1996 the Panos road star become the first American production uh, aviation cars using super plastic forming for 14 body panels. So, it utilizes 14 different body panels and that has been. So, you can, so, uh, you can see here the usual car which has been used for the, the car mentioned. Uh, the only problem with super plasticity is high cost it has been found, because you require a high energy apart from the toolings. So, you have, so there is a need for the super plasticity that especially a process material that uh, high temperature you require, you require long uh, cycle time for forming and you also require the care in handling the parts. So, that is if this could be, uh, be there one can go for the super plastic forming at very high speed and that is how uh, one of that process uh, comes to be say hydro forming usually very popular for aerospace standards. So, you know the hydro forming parts as this shows you form the uh, under hydrostatic pressure. So, but in hydro forming the speed is not very high. So, the, the ram applies the and the work piece is uh, in it is in uh, contact with a fluid kind of it is not contact with the metallic part and that is the simple forming process machine here you can see. The hydro forming result shows that uh, there is a limited ductility problems that is dealt with uh, repeated cycle of forming annealing increasing pressure forming again and again etcetera like this case. So, that is the, so to deal with the, this situation to increase the productivity to deal with the size a bigger size you have. Uh, so, one can the people started thinking, so whether can high velocity forming help us. So, under these situations because uh, the behavior is different at high velocity, uh, where you have a very short time available for forming. So, let us consider uh, the photograph of uh, Harold Ederbung, uh, these photograph shows the high velocity or short time phenomenon, where the key point is that inertia can affect behavior very significantly. And based on this, one may imagine that the inertia may uh, lend uh, beneficial effect to sheet metal forming. So, you can see here, see when you cut a card, when you cut a plastic card like this. So, if you 
pass through a bullet, very high speed bullet. So, it cuts so easily length uh, uh, the thickness wise, so the thickness is almost negligible, but it cuts just like a very smooth here. Similarly, uh, when you provide a uh, golf, uh, so what happens the, when you strike the uh, stick, the golf stick to the ball at very high speed. So, the large pressure because of the large pressure, the ball becomes compressed and that it leads to be uh, thrown away very quickly at very high impact. And also look at this figure, where you cup forming from a milk drop, say if you drop a uh, milk like see, say in a milk, so how a cup shape is formed one can see. So, the this shows that there is forming, but this forming is for a uh, microsecond, one may not see it that it is it has happened. So, if a drop of milk is dropped inside uh, the milk itself, so this kind of uh, shape is generated. So, can we freeze, can we take advantage of and this is the what is the case of high velocity form, very high velocity form, but you have to freeze it somehow. So, these natural phenomenon uh, guide us whether it is possible to go for the high velocity forming. So, there are different methods of high velocity forming we would look into. Uh, over the years in fact, uh, particularly in 1960s, uh, there has been a sub, uh, substantial amount of work on high energy uh, metal forming and uh, prominent methods include your explosive forming, uh, the high velocity forming, water hammer forming, explosive gas forming, electro hydraulic forming and uh, electromagnetic forming as well. So, these uh, the last two methods like that is electro hydraulic forming and electromagnetic forming use capacitor bank discharge. So, uh, and this is more uh, reproducible and more compatible with mass production than uh, methods based on uh, chemical explosion. So, uh, we would look into these two process also especially, but these are the some of the, the methods uh, by which one can produce the component using high velocity forming techniques. So, let us see one by one uh, of these. So, in what happens in explosive forming, you know that you require a explosive charge within a close contour area and uh, the part that is to be formed, uh, the charge is kept below that and uh, you have to put a lot of uh, safeguards and then once it explodes, the part get a shape or because of the explosive uh, waves generated. So, a long uh, practice technique which is known to offer solution for hard to form or large size of the part as I said. So, it has been used for many historically and currently explosively formed parts uh, provided to like Boeing and uh, rocket and, and others parts has been used for producing uh, using explosive form. Those details one can see there, but particularly this lecture is aimed to let us see as a very usual manner uh, this class of forming processes. In electromagnetic forming scheme, if you see, uh, you have a solenoid and uh, you have a uh, coil form and uh, you have a capacitor. So, if you look at this uh, diagram, you have a charging circuit and then capacitor and you have a coil solenoid and a ring specimen is kept there. 
So, this apparatus uh, expands the specimen ring at very high velocity. So, it will expand because of the capacitor bank provides the uh, high discharge of the energy that is uh, in the form of electrical pulses. So, if you see the time and the solenoid current, so the, the current reaches up to say 12 uh, uh, more than 12 ampere around 20 ampere and the, the solenoid compare uh, solenoid current is the this way and the specimen current becomes very high and that is how within a very short span of time the forming can takes place and that is how we call it as the electromagnetic forming scheme. The typical practice of electro forming is like here you can see the uh, the nature of, of in uh, induced current in there is induced current in plate uh, give the strong repulsion in any configuration like here. So, the, you have a conductive plate is kept and the solenoid coil and the connectivity is shown uh, the capacitor and uh, the L C circuit and all that. So, uh, usually you can only do it with conductive material that is aluminum is also a conductive material. So, one can go for the electromagnetic form. Uh, you can see the, the high speed camera images that has been taken with a uh, inner turn like image of the electromagnetic forming here. So, one can see that uh, uh, the free expansion of the aluminum plate this which is captured with the 30 millisecond between the images each one and uh, average velocity is around 55 meter per second you see. So, within the 6 mm height centimeter height it has been captured at the rate of 30 microsecond. And, uh, 3.6 kilo joule of the discharge of the energy uh, at uh, 127 multiplied by 203 multiplied by 0.8 mm thick plate is used. So, aluminum plate is generally used uh, uh, at uh, top. So, simple 3 bar coil attachment to the capacitor has been made like here, where the pulse is of around 40 microsecond and 80 kilo ampere. So, these forms you can see how quick and the gra gradual changes to take place happens in uh, electromagnetic forming. Another area we call it is the electro hydraulic forming where again the things are almost similar, but here you perform it uh, within the water. So, you have again a charging resistance, you have a step of transformer, you have the capacitor, bank of capacitor with the ignition switches and then you have voltage drivers, you have a backup dump registers and all those things and you have a digital oscillator scope to measure the pulses. And then it is conducted in a vacuum and the die is placed and the sample the red one is the sample. So, red one is the sample and you can see the bridge wire where the the that will a hydro forming a hydro electro hydraulic wave is generated once the the discharge of the capacitor bank takes place and the red sample will be formed over the die which is of the L shape here and a proper vacuum is provided so that the gas within the area is escaped very quickly. So, the water is used here you can see. So, these are the some of the slide showing the uh, electro hydraulic results. You see the uh, for the uh, titanium aluminum 6061 that is how it is formed uh, the size is shown and here it is your copper annealed copper. So, this is what is formed with the static hydraulic pressure 
on the left side and other side which is has been shown the electro hydraulic shock wave which is uh, shown in the previous case. So, you can now see the comparison of the two. In fact, uh, high rate uh, formability uh, one can quantify um, and uh, one can do lot of experimentation at uh, minor strain rates and major strains one can locate at different strain rates and uh, similar experiments uh, can be uh, consistently show that 3 to 5 fold improvements has takes place in plane strain ductility and uh, one can perform the experiment uh, particularly this uh, graph shows for the experiment which has been carried out for the high rate forming uh, on aluminum, copper and iron you can see there. So, the high strain rate uh, and, and the minor strains and the major strains has been studied. So, this shows the possible high energy rate uh, FLD there and the limitation. So, for the enhanced formability what are the reasons looking into this discussion what are the reasons uh, for this enhanced formability? If it is asked, so the first reason is that the inertial stabilization of the, the growing necks. So, because of the inertia it gets stabilized. Second, the inertial ironing takes place and third which is very important the sample size uh, uh, and the shape effects are almost uh, minimized. So, because then that is how the bigger sample size can be formed. As far as the velocity and boundary conditions affecting the ductility is concerned, you see the axisymmetric ring expansion like here and the high velocity tension here. So, these two uh, cases are considered. In both cases, ductility increases increased and uh, corresponds with model here like you see. So, the those you can see the increase in the ductility and the, so the boundary conditions are also important like for the axisymmetric case and another this case. As I said the inertial ironing is also very good uh, in forming of these cases. Though the thickness comparison of the seat adds it is the uh, uh, extension which is similar to rolling like here. So, the traditionally what happens you have tool you have work piece and traditionally you remove the material like this and the mandrel on the side. In case of inertial ironing the situation are slightly different. So, the on the die side and then the work piece is here and you form it with such a high velocity. Uh, so, that is the difference with the inertial. So, that the time is span available for forming is very small, but here in the traditional forming the time is span is large enough and that is how uh, like here the ring uh, height plays a very important role in ductility. So, if you take this case where the ring height and uh, orientation of the extension has been shown like for uh, titanium and copper ring studies. So, you have the maximum ductility without failure uh, is plotted here. So, the height if you see the aluminum and static ductility case and the copper and static ductility such case. So, that is uh, also plays uh, and shows that uh, you at high strain the ductility also changes and uh, the form forming limits uh, are uh, velocity dependent therefore, as I said because uh, of the ductility decreased ductility as well as. So, the increased deformability with increased velocity we get. So, for an example if you see here aluminum 6061 uh, T i ring sample which where we the expanded with a solenoid coil at the earlier example. 
So, when it is undeformed it is like here, when it is 35 percent elongation that is the free expansion it has been shown there, a 42 percent elongation which is free expansion and 50 percent elongation with uh, cylindrical die if you use. So, uh, one can notice that quasi static total elongation from tensile test it is around 26.4 percent. So, that is the beauty of uh, the, the velocity forming and that is the forming limit uh, that depends on the velocity and there is increased deformation with increased velocity. As far as uh, equipments and are concerned with the uh, high energy, high velocity forming because uh, wrinkling is also important. Here in this case you are not going to put any uh, device for reducing the wrinkling. So, forming of uh, cuff forming usually the wrinkling has been very uh, problem associated and you usually put uh, blank holding. So, what happens, what kind of equipment and the wrinkling control has to be to be careful in uh, high velocity forming. So, there are two key points regarding this. Number one that uh, the high velocity uh, inhibits wrinkling that is because the wrinkling chances are more in high velocity forming and secondly the high velocity forming equipment is simple. You can have a very simple equipment for this. So, for an example, if you see a, a ring compression experiment, so here you will see, so that is the comparison of a thin ring which is uh, possible with high velocity uh, without wrinkle you see. So, that is uh, another uh, and uh, drag forming of metal cups. So, this is another uh, cups can be formed without hole drawn okay, uh, at sufficiently high velocity and there is wrinkling is uh, inhibited here see you can see. So, that is the vacuum and uh, the metal sheet is kept there and the coils around the leads and all that and die. So, you can see the wrinkles are very less. So, you can see the, the first case, second case, third case and the last one which is done and that is how you perform drag forming uh, a, a special name given to this case. In uh, real practice this case shows the drag test as I said drag forming a, a system which is used in uh, experimental setup for drag forming. So, this is what is the drag and the coil and all arrangements. So, this is the experimental setup. So, you have uh, what happens to the, the high surface pressure like embossing what happens, because the seat uh, is thrown at a die with a, a polished face with sandpaper if you look at usually and uh, reflective surface where the polished surface uh, shrunk and uh, mat where the sandpaper is stuck. So, uh, coining if you take the, the coining like pressure. So, what happens with the high surface pressure embossing and because there is a little spring back also uh, as, as the cladding possibility is there. So, if you see here the, the the coil ring setup where if you perform you get these results. So, such a process is not possible with traditional forming. So, if you do it at high forming, so but can be done with a simple setup with electromagnetic forming here. So, here you can get a very good result. So, the advantage uh, with the high velocity forming is that you have a very simple tooling. So, for an example full electromagnetic forming if you use. So, you can drag 
forming you can do like here you have a die, you have vacuum and work piece just put it. And the another case you can perform the stretch or cavity forming like here. Whereas, uh, in uh, strategic inserts can also be used using uh, electromagnetic forming, only where it is needed like you can put the binder all sides and then inserts of the EM coils are uh, made like here and thus if you put the inserts of EM coils and the very complex uh, re uh, entrained components are possible with the such approaches like here. So, you have a punch here then read and shapes. So, that this is what is called as a strategic insert and uh, so you can further make the complex parts to be produced using uh, electromagnetic forming. This example shows uh, a speaker diaphragm which is formed electromagnetically. You can see here uh, the electromagnetic elect speaker diaphragm generally. So, you have the component now uh, with this aluminum or titanium with so seeds are expanded into a die at very high velocity. So, die area is evacuated you can see there. So, the advantage of electromagnetic forming is that uh, the other technique cannot make parts like the seed takes on exact configuration of the die because and it has a improved formability, it has low scrap rate and uh, one sided dies are generally used, second die is not required here. So, that is what is the very simple example where the spec, speaker diagrams are formed electromagnetically. Uh, another uh, case where the, the process of the AWS process is shown here that is the evacuated one vacuum evacuated chamber is created and you have the electromagnetic coils as shown there and capacitor bank and so you have you get the finish component like here the size. So, that is another um, example as far as the current issue is concerned in uh, high velocity forming. Uh, the, the earlier discussion what we have made uh, that much potential, there are much potential for a uh, high velocity forming. Uh, there are certain difficulties however, and they are coupled with the like the coil design is important, uh, the strength must be high of the coil and uh, must launch component with good velocity profile and as far as the analysis tools are needed also. So, the coil design and stress analysis is required, sizing of the capacitor bank is also very important and uh, simulating operations before building tools is also important. So, uh, this is what is presently required. Uh, Uh, this is what is the case where the high speed photograph is available of uh, electromagnetic forming dome forming you can see here. So, this is what is the, the details taken from N Takashui and M Koto like this one. So, the, the safe change of uh, a EM dome has been shown here at uh, uh, 19 microsecond, 95 microsecond, 135 microsecond and 240 microsecond. So, these experimental profiles of the disk during deformation has been shown here. So, you can see the time and you can see the, the shape that is formed. So, uh, these are the um, shows that the things uh, are done at very small time. Uh, one can simulate say for an example CALE simulation is available for axisymmetric case at 90 microseconds and the simulations 
at 30, 300 microseconds are also there to the same example. And uh, this guides a lot and it helps this simulation CALE simulation to design the components of uh, EM forming. So, uh, as far as the details, the formulations of explosive forming, EM forming and electro forming, uh, these are available in usually standard books, especially Malik and Ghosh book and other books. So, that I have escaped especially to show you the how the, the scope of high energy rate forming. So, as a summary, uh, there are significant technical advantage with uh, a high velocity forming. So, what we have so far, the formability is improved up to around 5 times, one can see with high uh, velocity forming. Wrinkling is inhibited, right? The impact pressure can be large, uh, so the, the quining like operations with simple tools can be performed and a good dimensional tolerances can be achieved with high energy, with high velocity forming. Uh, setup can be very simple and almost inexpensive and the techniques are uh, established, but it is not very common, it is uncommon. So, uh, development in several areas are still needed and especially on the modeling side, the coil robustness size, formability rules etcetera. So, these are some of the things is required for further uh, options and there are huge area opened uh, to try for the high velocity forming using uh, the, the these processes can also be combined with say like the hydraulic hydro mechanical forming, then the electro hydro forming and all those things, explosive as well as. So, one can try uh, doing those cases as well. So, hopefully this lecture has been, uh, has given you enough information based on uh, high velocity forming. And uh, usually you go for the sheet for sheet metal uh, that is 2.5 D components, it is easily, but the size may be very high. So, uh, I thank you all for uh, keeping patience and uh, hopefully you will give your feedback for the future improvement. Thank you, thank you very much once again.